Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on with. Okay, today it's going to be Queen Elizabeth II. Let's see what's in store for the monarch. There seem to be a lot of uh, gossip and uh, stir up around uh, the uh, Cambridges and the Sussexes, but what about the Queen? You know, who's worrying about the Queen? So let's see if we can zero in on how the Queen is getting by uh, just now. So today it's going to be uh, Queen Elizabeth II. I mean, let's see what's in the cards for her. And I've got a little history for you. I'm sure there's some stuff here that you don't know, and it's all fascinating. Okay, so 1926, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor was born in Mayfair, London at 2.40 p.m. on the 21st of April, delivered by cesarean section at her maternal grandfather's uh, London house, 17 Bruton Street, uh, Mayfair. 1936, her grandfather, King George V, died and her uncle David succeeded the throne as King Edward VIII. Now, later that year, Edward VIII abdicated to marry a divorced American socialite, Wallace Simpson. And in 1938, her father, King George VI, ascended the throne on the abdication of her uncle, King Edward VIII. Uh, 1939, Britain entered the Second World War. Someone suggested that the princesses should be evacuated to Canada. Their mother declared, the children won't go without me. I won't leave without the king, and the king will never leave. 1934 and 1937, Elizabeth met Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark. They were second and third cousins. 1939, after another meeting in Dartmouth, 13 years old, Elizabeth fell in love with Philip, and they began to exchange letters. On her 21st birthday, she pledged, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. 1947, she married Philip, who, in order to marry her, agreed to abdicate his princely titles to Greece and Denmark. And in 1952, Elizabeth and Philip were on a tour of Australia and New Zealand by way of Kenya and had just returned to their home when word arrived of the king's death, and Philip is the one that broke the news to Elizabeth, who, of course, immediately ascended to the throne. 25-year-old Elizabeth became the head of the Commonwealth and the queen regnant of seven independent Commonwealth countries, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, and realms including South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, which was renamed Sri Lanka. I think I just repeated myself, but I'm not editing this. Uh, those re later became republics. In 1971, a director of her bank, uh, Coots, I guess that's how it's pronounced, estimated her wealth at $12 million, that is equivalent uh, in, in 2019 dollars to about $28 million. Hmm. In 1981, during a trooping of the color, six shots were fired at the Queen from close range as she rode down the mall in London on her horse. The Queen's composure and skill in controlling her mount were widely praised. The shots were blanks, and the 17-year-old assailant was sentenced to five years in prison and released after three. Months later, the Queen was again attacked in Dunedin, New Zealand. Another 17-year-old fired a shot from a building overlooking the parade, but missed. He was arrested and sentenced to three years in jail for unlawful possession and discharge of a firearm, not for uh, trying to kill the monarch. <laughs> 1993, Buckingham Palace called her personal wealth estimates of $100 million grossly overstated. 2002, she inherited an estate worth an estimated $70 million from her mother. Well, of course, she was uh, Elizabeth was queen. She inherited that estate from the queen mother. In 2015, the Royal Collection includes thousands of historic works of art and the British Crown Jewels is held in trust by the Queen, as are her official residences, such as Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, and the Duchy of Lancaster. That property portfolio, I believe is what this is meant by, that property for portfolio valued at $472 million. That was in 2015. Uh, Sandringham House and Balmora Castle are personally owned by the Queen. And uh, in 2020, the Sunday Times Rich List estimated her personal wealth at $350 million, making her the 372nd richest person in the UK. Hmm. In 2022, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee is planned. And 2024, she would surpass anyone 
as the longest reigning monarch of a sovereign state in verified world history on the 27th of May, and she does not intend to abdicate. A list of titles for um, Elizabeth II would be, uh, since 1952, Her Majesty the Queen, uh, Queen of Jamaica and her other realms and territories in Jamaica, Queen of Australia and her other realms and territories in Australia, in the Channel Islands and Isle of Man, which are crown dependencies rather than separate realms, she is known as the Duke of Normandy and the Lord of Man, respectively. And then additional styles include the Defender of the Faith, the Duke of Lancaster. And when in conversation with the Queen, if, if, you, if that should happen to you, uh, the practice is to address her initially as Your Majesty and thereafter as Ma'am. And plans for the Queen's own death and funeral, codenamed Operation London Bridge, have been prepared by British government and media organizations since the 1960s. So that's what we know about Queen Elizabeth II. So let's see what's going on for her according to the cards and this humble tarot reader now. So I had to use the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black, Australian uh, digital artist, uh, for this reading on Queen Elizabeth. They are, I'm, I'm telling you that these are the most regal looking cards that I have. So that's an endorsement. Um, as I've said before, they come in a cool box. They have a very useful uh, instruction booklet that's not too difficult to read uh, as far as the size of the print goes. And then the cards, as I've shown you before, are just outstanding, stunning, amazing assemblage of, of uh, digital uh, art from actual works of art, museum quality art, that Cat Black uh, pieced together to make these mostly face images. I mean, these, these cards, the story is told in the face of the images that are depicted here. So that's kind of what you, I would, I look for, and I guess, suppose that's what you should look for when you're looking at the cards. You know, um, this is pretty uh, insane for me to think that I can pick up on the energy of the Queen of England, I suppose. But that's what I'm gonna do. And we're going to give it a really good shot uh, and if you all can help by just clearing your minds and focusing on uh, what you think would be helpful for me to get this uh, divination out, um, I would say take a few deep breaths. Really try to expel kind of your preconditioned um, thoughts of, of the monarchy and the queen. And let's just see if we can figure out who is Elizabeth right now as a person. I mean, can you even imagine being the actual person who is the Queen of England uh, and held in all of this esteem? So, I'm going to take six cards right off the top. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll put these off to the side because I'm going to need them for another four cards in just a little bit. And we'll see if we can find out a little bit about Queen Elizabeth the Woman. The signifier card for this uh, is the Tower card. And I'm sure that's exactly on point. I mean, she has lost her husband. She has turmoil in her family amongst her really beloved grandsons. And um, so, yeah, I would say the Tower is a, uh, a worthy signifier for the woman of Queen Elizabeth right now. The challenge to that, though, is the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands is a heavy, heavy uh, load uh, to carry, a heavy burden to move forward. But just like this uh, sturdy-faced uh, young woman, who's gathered up all these actions, all these plans, all this motion, all this fire into a manageable bundle that she seems very uh, comfortable with moving forward. It looks like this woman has moved these issues around for quite some time and is very comfortable in how she's chosen to move them forward. She looks very relaxed in that, uh, uh, that uh, chore. But that is the challenge to the tower uh, moment for uh, the woman of Queen Elizabeth uh, right now. The base of this reading then is the Four of Swords, and more, now more than ever is the time to know that you have to take your time and get all the rest and recuperation and solace that you can find while you're still protected um, and um, before you get up and, and perform the duties that are required of you. Not that you 
volunteered for, not that you um, rallied for, but that were put on you and were never expected at such a young age, especially. Then uh, the past for this, uh, for this reading for the woman of Queen Elizabeth is the high priestess. And uh, she has had to be that. She has had to be her high priestess. If you think it's hard being the high priest or the high priestess in your humble life, imagine what it's like to be in charge in her life. Now, in the sky for this reading, for the woman of Queen Elizabeth, is the wheel of fortune. And it's always been that. From the very beginning, her life was thrown to the winds of the wheel of fortune without her ever having uh, an inkling that this would be the direction that she'd go in. I mean, as a, as a child, this would never have, it uh, was never expected that this is what's going to happen. It would be the equivalent, uh, in a way, now, of uh, George, um, um, not George, but uh, Archie, uh, somehow ending up uh, king. I mean, it's that surprising uh, when that happened. So there we go for the sky, the wheel of fortune. She can only throw her fortune to the wind and, uh, and hope that it comes down in a favorable way. The outcome for this part of this reading <coughs> is the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is a sturdy, trustworthy, bearer of the truth, bearer of the law. And this stern-faced knight is exactly uh, who this queen uh, is also. So now we're going to take the rest of these cards. I feel like I, I want to cut the cards for some reason. And I want to put them over here. So we're going to take four cards to finish off this uh, divination. We'll start deep down here in the bottom with the first one. And that's the self of Elizabeth. The self of Elizabeth right now, this is very interesting. The self of Elizabeth shows us the three of cups, which is celebrations. And um, I, may, I, could, I think right away of the three um, of the monarch and the future monarch and the next future monarch. Uh, together, not necessarily celebrating anything except the lineage of the monarchy. Now, the um, environment that that is in, however, for the self of the woman that is Queen Elizabeth, is a two of wands. And this is a wise woman who's making short-term plans. These are not the long-term plans that we see in the three of wands. These are the short-term plans. She knows that she doesn't have f that far in the future to, to plan for herself. Let's face it. The um, hopes and the fears for the woman of Elizabeth is the queen of coins. So her hope would be that she is in complete control of her value right to the very last, right to the end. And who wouldn't want that sort of an outcome? But the actual outcome for this entire reading for the woman of Queen Elizabeth is the three of swords. And the three of swords is heartbreak. And uh, the heartbreak is that she's lost her, her wonderful uh, stead and stay of Prince Philip, uh, that her life is coming to an end. And I'm sure she worries for the future of her beloved nation. So that's the reading I have today for the woman, Queen Elizabeth II. That was a pretty strong reading, I have to tell you. It started out with the signifier of the tower card. What's more appropriate than that? It moved right into the challenge of that tower card being carrying that uh, ten of wands, that bundle of issues that she's learned how to carry so very well. Um, we come to the hopes and fears of, uh, of being the queen of coins. So really hoping towards this last push um, of her career, of everything really, that she maintains uh, the queen of all of her value. And then the final uh, outcome, sadly, was the three of swords, which is heartbreak. And how can it be anything else? She's lost her husband. She knows her life's coming to the end. There's worry about the secession of the monarchy. Sad that it goes out like that. Well, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you so very much for coming along. I really do appreciate it. I hope this reading was interesting for you. And um, come back tomorrow. We'll go somewhere else then. But ciao for now.